Osio, welcome to the Red Road East. I'm your host, Fierce Truth Seeker. Today's topic is the stolen legacy of the American Aborigine. And we have a guest who has a personal story to tell, okay? And this particular topic is very important because there's another aspect of indigenous American history that gets neglected, um, particularly when you talk about those who are of a darker hue. The story that most people know is that <clears throat> there were those of our people who came via the transatlantic slave trade and mixed in with various Indian tribes, quote unquote. And then also there were those of us who were here before the quote unquote Indian tribes and had been misclassified as colored, Negro, um, black, mulatto, things of that nature, okay? And a lot of times they did these reclassifications in order to steal people's lands, okay? You hear a lot of talk about the $5 Indians and stuff like that. Um, you know, some people dismiss it, you know, and I've been saying for years that, you know, a lot of times what people did was they would assume the identities of a lot of our people in order to take the land, okay? And this happened a lot of times, even when, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, well, in order for you to prove indigenous American ancestry, you know, you have to go through the Dawes um, Commission, the Dawes Rolls, and, you know, a lot of times that is good for some of us, and for the great majority, it's not, because when you talk about the Dawes, number one, if you weren't living in, quote unquote, Indian territory during the time that they were taking the census, then you were not on the rolls, okay? So then what happens, okay? If you're, let's say, in this day and time and you're trying to find your ancestors on the rolls, it's not gonna happen if your ancestors were not present um, when the census takers came around. Then also, another thing that happened is you had a lot of settlers who came and they were just assuming a lot of our names and taking land. You know, let's say if you were not on, you know, if, if you had family that had property somewhere and, you know, they relocated or whatever and the property was just sitting there, then somebody could, would come along and they would just say that, they'll say if your name was Jones, you know, they come along and say, oh yes, I'm Mr. Jones, you know, and they would take your land. And this happened a lot. I mean, um, look at it, there's a documentary called Hey Tai. You look at this documentary called Hey Tai, and you'll see how, you know, they were taking a lot of our people's land, you know, um, they created a highway system to go through you know, a lot of our um, towns, there's a lot of quote unquote um, black towns mm -hmm. that were created. A lot of them are ghost towns now, and some of them are actually towns where you see mainly Caucasians living, but the land didn't originally belong to them, okay? And this happened uh, uh, quite often. I mean, Black Wall Street, you know, quote unquote Black Wall Street. A lot of those people um, that were part of Black Wall Street 
uh, a lot of them were indigenous people. And if you study the history, you'll see that that is so. Um, so I'm opening up with that because I have a guest who actually her family had land and the land was somebody else came and assumed her family's identity um, in order to try to claim that land. And today I am joined with Lydia Percy. Hi, Lydia. Hi, how are you? Good, good. good to Lydia be here. Percy is uh, Narr Narragansett and Blackfoot. Yes. The land in question that we're talking about, they still, the family still has the land in Lynchburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that, uh, you know, a lot of times in southern roots, uh, people are buried behind the Baptist church or the churches in the south. And my great great grandparents have their, you know, burial in back of the church. And the person who was burying us was a, you know, like a neighbor. You know, he had his own funeral parlor. And so it came about that um, the developers up near the Blue Ridge Mountain in Lynchburg, near Nelson County, inquired about the land, you know, like who has, who owns this land. And he said, I do. Mm. So they found it kind of odd because he had no title. He didn't know any two too much about the property. It was woods, and uh, I brought the pictures, what it actually looked like. It just, it's just um, a very bleak and stark, you know, land. It's just mm. all woods and property, and the family house is still there to this day. That's where the family was at mm. during the times when the lawyers um, intervened, and uh, that's the house as it is right now near the Blue Ridge Mountain. Mm. and Lynchburg and that's that is the woods it's no property there except for that one house that sits on top and they did a the attorneys did a title search and they found out that the property belonged to the Hagers which is it says here Hager property that's timeline. your family that's Hagers. my family the Hagers mm. And they stem from um, Blackfoot and uh, a combination of, uh, because of miscegenation, a combination. And they've always been there. And the land has always been there. And they've taken timber off of there mm -hmm. to use at will for years, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, the person, uh, Mr. Parr said it was his land and nobody questioned it until the developers started looking around to build um, around on that property. You know, mm -hmm. wanted to, to also put a roadway to go through and near the mountains. And that's basically what we're dealing with. We're still in litigation to this very day. Mm -hmm. And I keep all the paperwork and it breaks down as far as they did such an extensive um, search that it goes all the way back to the 1800s and these are all the relatives currently up to date to where we come in all the heirs and the descendants. Wow, how back is, how far back is this This going? goes back to the 1800s up there. Mm. All the way to currently to the new generation to where we are. At. Wow. So it's, it's property that was done in lots. Mm -hmm. So my great, great, great grandfather Hager, Drew Hager, he had um, portions of it sectioned off. Mm -hmm. Nobody really lived there, so the family built a house there, which is still standing. Mm. Wow. Yes. So they did the mm. title search and everything. So now there's still some family members have um, either the land has been stolen from them mm -hmm. because um, one of the people had a horse farm and she wanted to expand on the property that was there. So since the gentleman said that that was his, he allowed her to start putting her horses there. Mm -hmm. That's how it all came about. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with um, finding out. And it was so interesting to listen to the brother uh, on the previous show talk because when it comes down to tribes, and it is a cultural 
and also to feel legitimate within the tribes. Because I know, for instance, my um, great grandmother, Lucy, from um, Rhode Island, I still have relatives living on the reservation in mm. Rhode Island. Wow. But there's also a division there because speaking of ancestry, we're still doing the DNA through ancestry, ancestry um, DNA mm. dot com, and uh, it's more whether or not you are blood related. It is a cultural uh, existence there. Mm -hmm. So and I just one thing uh, with the DNA too mm -hmm. is, and I noticed this from doing my DNA, right. is that you're able to find, they have a feature for DNA relatives. Right. So, you know, those relatives will come up, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And so they can try to get away if they, they want try, to. They <laughs> but we're but if there. They, if, they, if they did their <laughs> DNA on, you know, with that company, yes. you know, it'll yes. show. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I still have, um, well, we have, um, descendants on this side and then speaking of property it's just so much has gone on a lot of african americans have lost a lot of um a lot of uh property through um where is it at that's my he was a farmer mm. but um, my great grandmother lucy that's my grandmother enola they mm -hmm. did the search here, mm -hmm. and it just shows that um, she, my father, before he passed away, he went to the um, reunion in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And you could definitely, they, they welcomed them, you know, mm -hmm. they have their powwow on the reservation and right. everything like that. But as far as the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren, the descendants of, you know, you're welcome, but it's still... To me, it seems to, that they do not want to acknowledge that part, portion of it. Mm -hmm. We have a reunion so. coming up. Yeah, that's my grandmother. That's my um, Enola Vickers. And her mother is on the other page. If you'll turn to my great-grandmother Lucy. She waited wait. Okay. I think I have it wrong here. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, lots of pages. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. I have to I have to sort it out here. She is on. I had two yeah. different sets. Um, that's the one from Lynchburg, but she should be in there. I sorted them out, but mm, no, this is just the property in Virginia. Mm. Maybe it's not in here. It should be in the front or the back. Okay. But anyway, oh, there she is. Okay. That, I don't know if you can see it. So that's my great-grandmother, Lucy Mae Vickers. And that's in Springfield, Mass., but she's um, also descendants in Rhode Island. And that's Enola Phillips Percy before she married my grandfather. Mm. And they traced back. Then I was telling um, someone about um, when we are going to have our what do you call it, a family reunion, mm -hmm. some of the cousins, I guess they don't want to associate. They literally took down <laughs> the websites of um, our great-great-grandmothers because, I don't know, I can't even explain it. It's wow. a cultural difference there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to be said, mm -hmm. you know, with families. And once they discover their DNA and we, you know, they're, they're linked up, and I don't know. Mm. I can't really elaborate on that, how they feel. I just know how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I basically take on the part of um, putting families together and mm. keeping our property in the family. It's really sad how a lot of African Americans have lost a lot of property through ill-gotten gains, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people hoodwink them out of it, or families don't stay together, and they begin to sell off parcels and pieces of property mm -hmm. and it goes into other hands mm. like um, for instance out in Sag Harbor mm. which is uh, another interesting factor on another side another level mm. but um, we're still in litigation with Lynchburg right wow. now. Wow still in litigation. Yes still that's, in litigation. That's been how long um, now? 
since 2000 and currently now. And so some of the family, it's all here and you can since see. Since 2000, that's almost 20 years. Yes. And we're currently, this is, they even outlined the property here. As you can see, the, they have the prices and everything there on how much it would be oh, to sell off. Yeah. yeah. So it's been since 2000. And then they mm -hmm. laid it out for us. And you can see here, it leads up to now. Mm -hmm. They informed everybody. It goes on and on. It's just uh, never ending because you have a lot of people who are um, going into court to fight it, to fight mm -hmm. the timeline, fight, fight the um, origin of who really came into the property, who was there first, mm -hmm. which they said was Native Americans, you know, those who are Native, those who are not associated with the particular family, so it goes on. Wow. So who uh, spearheaded the, um, the litigation? Oh, well, after, uh, they, after the developers uh, contacted each living heir, you know, the elders, my mother, and because my grandparents have passed on, mm -hmm. They contacted us, and I represent my mother, her side, her portion of it, and uh, actually, it was it was the the people who sort of took this on was the developers themselves. Mm. They wanted, they still, they want everything to be solidified. So they were the ones who spearheaded every. Wow. Yeah, they did the search. They did the you know the finding out the trees mm. to who's who, mm -hmm. and we have people from here to Pittsburgh to California. I mean, there's heirs mm. everywhere. Wow. You know, descendants of this line. Mm. So that's, that's where we stand now. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's... that's um... And we're going back into court coming up in April. Really? Yes. Mm. Wow, that's just a month away. Yes, it is. Mm. And that same house there, that's where we meet at. Mm. Mm. Wow. So, so um, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. So most of your family are living here um, in New York? No, that particular family is living in, uh, they're still in Lynchburg, Nelson County, Massis mm -hmm. Mill, because they still go to the same church that my mother and grandmother went to, um, Oak Hill Baptist Church, and they still live there. Mm -hmm. Up near the Blue Ridge Mountain, you know, they live not in that house, but they still live around the area of Nelson County. Mm. Yes, and then some of our, most of our relatives are in the south. Okay. But I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you, you still go to, um, do you go to the powwows and stuff like that? I'm going to this year, I'm going to the powwow. I'm going to the one in Rhode Island. I usually go to the one out in Southampton, but that's, mm -hmm. You know, this Nar um, not Narragansett, Shinnecock, mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm definitely going to that one in Rhode Island this year. Yeah, I've been meaning to go to yeah. Narragansett's yeah, Nar powwow yes, for yes. years. Yeah. I'm definitely going <laughs> to that one. Haven't gotten a chance to get out there yet, but, you know. It's really I'm great. I plan to go to their powwow. I had pictures um, of my father and them at the last one before he passed. Mm. But they're not in the, they're in the photo album. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. And he was too sick to really enjoy it, but he did it mm -hmm. because it was my my grandmother, uh, Enola Vickers. She um, was still alive, mm -hmm. and her my uncle Benny. He's still alive. He's ninety some years old, and my cousins. They were all there. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to that one. So who was it in your family that um, made you all aware of your Narragansett and Blackfoot ancestry? Look, let me tell you something. Growing up. That was one of the things you couldn't get away from. Mm. You couldn't get away from conversations in the house and always a storyteller. <laughs> there was always a storyteller in the house. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, Percy, she, she kept a Bible. Mm. And her Bible was like sacred. It had everything, um, birth certificates, everything was in there. Mm. Everything from her mother, uh, my grandma Lucy, very quiet woman. Very quiet, very yeah. strange woman. <laughs> but she never said a word, very quiet. I don't know what she was 
smoking in her pipe, but she was very <laughs> quiet, very reserved. Mm -hmm. they, they kept it going ever wow. since we were little, ever since I can remember. Yeah. Yeah, we going. We used to go up to Springfield, Mass, to be with the family, mm -hmm. and everybody lived on the same um, street. And then we used to go um, to several different parties, you know. But it was them basically wanted to keep the the nar not the narrative going, but the stories going of your great great grandparents and knowing who they, where you came from. Mm. And so now it's just up to me to get everybody together and on board with this property because I feel that selling off your property is like is the worst thing that you could possibly do. Holding on to land is a big thing. It is. And it's priceless. Yep. Very so true. Very that's true. what we're doing. So I go down south often. I'm always in Virginia. Of course, my cousin is um, here. He's another piece of the puzzle. He's part of, he's part of this line. Um, the Hager property, the one, the cousin who was in Russia, is mm -hmm. now living in D.C. Mm -hmm. and he's also an heir on there. He has a lot in Lynchburg that belonged to his mother, his grandmother, his great grandmother Margaret, mm -hmm. who was our, you know, a relative of our, ours. Oh, so. Okay. Wow. So it's just an ongoing process. It's sad, but it it has to be discovered and listening to. Um, your other guests that was very informative and mm. you know you just keep digging and keep looking at where your roots come from yeah yeah you know where are you rooted from mm -hmm. cuz you could say you're from s somewhere but the dna is is the tell to it doesn't, lie. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> lie that's the thing that's it doesn't right. lie mm -hmm. and people would be surprised you know to say they're from somewhere and then find out no Yep. <laughs> you know, you're not from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's interesting. It's yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. And the good thing, what I like about you is, you know, you have all of your documents. Oh, you yes. Know, you can pull out, bam, bam. I can pull bam. it out. <laughs> I, I, I mean, they had, um, these are like a wills, and um, they go back to um, the history, uh, the family history of my great-grandfather, Patrick H Henry. And um, they mm. laid it all out who was willed what mm. and what family had what. And so these are like wills that popped up. And I keep everything. Doc yes, I always have everything. Mm. And when I was in Lynchburg, I did go to the courthouse, which has all the records okay. and the archives of the, ho the owners because they were considered mulattoes, mm. but they were because they were um, mixed you know, they had who willed them what, and it's a lot. It's, it's very interesting. Mm, wow. <laughs> I can go on and tell you more about that, but it's very interesting. Mm. So, yeah, I keep everything together. And this is just not even, this is not all of it. This is just a portion of it. Mm. I literally have books that I've established on my own with photographs and, and pictures that were given to me, negatives. Mm. People actually were throwing away. Really? Throwing away, mm. yes. So, wow. you know, you have to know what you're talking about, basically speaking. Yeah, yeah. So, and I keep them all, birth certificates and everything. Mm. But yeah, it's ongoing, and I'm curious to find out. Uh, we're waiting for some DNA testing um, on my um, uh, paternal my uh, maternal grandmother, grand grandfather's side, because what I understand is that they, um, my great-great-grandmother, Atlanta Lockhart Jolly, everyone thought she was from uh, South Carolina, mm -hmm. but I come to find out through um, talking to a historian that she actually came over on a ship from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wow. okay, where does this fit in with us? Like. Where do we fit in in that package? And they mm. uh, landed and stayed in the Gullah Islands okay. of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I anticipate on going to the celebration of, mm. yes, nice. of that. Wow. Yeah, so that was interesting. Mm. So everybody's like, oh, no, 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 that can't be. But that was. Mm. So we were just waiting to find out wow. to see what that linked up with. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, it's, it's very important. You know, like you say, you got to keep digging. That's you true. Know? It's important mm -hmm. to know where you come from. Yeah, yeah. Like you say, in every family, you know, you always have the storytellers. You have the stories. <laughs> like, you know, I'm this and I'm that, you know, the stories. But yeah. what's interesting is that it's such a, a fascinating um, encounter to realize there is a, a trail, you know. It may not take you to where you think you might be going, you know, like you you assume that you are who you are, and it's, it's not always the case, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I was like that too. You know, I was the time I was always inquisitive, mm -hmm. you know, and I would yes. sit down, you know, with my elders, you know, my grandparents and ask yes. them questions about questions. the family and, you know, take my notes. Exactly. And, you know, that's exactly. how I know so much exactly. about the family now. You know, I took the information that they had, you know, and that, that, you know, they gave me so much information to, yes. you know, now it's very, you know, um, you made it, it's still always learning new things, but, you know, I have a lot of information about my family history, which makes it so much easier to that's do the true. research. That's you know? true. And the research, and you'll be researching forever, but mm -hmm. that's what you need, you know. My children, uh, they know everything that I've been, you know, talking to them about and their father, you know because there's a situation now, but you, you always have to keep it going. It's like um, you have to come full circle with finding out who you are mm -hmm. and, and what everybody is doing. That's why I think reunions are very important, Yeah, you know, and that's why old folks kept a Bible. That's right. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I really appreciate you joining us today. Well, I appreciate being here. And I wish you much success, yes. you know, with the litigation and everything, you know, that y'all be able to have a victory. Yes, you know. definitely. Yeah. Well, they stopped taking the timber off the land. Okay. Because it wasn't supposed to be, so he no longer, that you know, because they were just chopping down trees and just selling it mm -hmm. at, a, you know, an astronomical price, so now that's stopped until they can resolve the issues of landowner. Okay. And who's paying for the taxes? That's mm. basically it. Okay. Well, thank Definitely. you again. And thank you. okay, so unfortunately, we have to wrap up. It's been a very, very interesting show. And we're going to take you out with some music. Okay. Until next time, do da da, gong hong eat.